Shigeru Miyamoto is perhaps the most influential game developer of all time. Many classic franchises have made their way into our living rooms. However, there's one that while it was released in Europe and Japan, it never received a North American release. That is Devil World. Now why did this game never get a release in North America? That's what I'm going to talk about today. Everybody, I didn't see you there. <laughs> Welcome, and you know, I might as well do a new review, and I'm gonna try something different. Instead of saying the whole "This is a Ben Eric" and "This is the a Ben Eric show," I don't need to introduce it. You guys already know you're watching the best show on freaking YouTube. So let's get this thing freaking started. You dig? Today's review is gonna be a special review. I'm gonna do my first import game and it is going to be for an awesome system a top loading system that Shady J does not have and fuck you for taking that NES top loader my revenge will come soon this is your fair warning anyways this is the Famicom and I'm sure if you saw my more shit I bought video, I showed off the specs of it, of this sexy beast. But now we're going to take a look at how this beast operates. We're going to get inside the sex machine of the Famicom. And our poison of choice today for the Famicom is... Devil World. A game made by Miyamoto that was never released in North freaking America. One of the most violent nations in the world, full of crackheads, potheads, cokeheads, dipheads, skinheads. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be racist or, you know, prejudiced, but you get the fucking point. A game like this was not released in America because back in the 80s, Nintendo had ridiculous restriction policies about any religious stuff or icons or symbols or references or sex or nudity and stuff and that so forth and this game surprisingly was considered controversial to the North American standards that Nintendo had so we're gonna take a look at this game cartridge looks pretty nice looks neat looks cute has a cute little green guy right there we're gonna talk about him as well so let's pop this sucker in the Famicom look how sleek and sexy this Famicom looks above its ugly North American Nintendo counterpart we're gonna slip this game in. look at that cute little green bubble bobble looking thing spitting a fireball at a big eye everything has one eye what the fuck is up with that made in Japan 1984 Nintendo Devil World Look at that. That's the devil, all right. There's a red one there, too. There's a cry. Oh, my gosh, guys. There we go. Uncensored 1982 action right there. A cross. Looks like some popcorn right there, too. Little bat. Do not wet, drop, blah, 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 yo mama. All right, guys. Let's fucking load this motherfucker in. And there we go.
Devil World, made by Nintendo in 1984, and this is the Famicom version. This looks kind of familiar. I can't put my finger on it, but what game looks like this? Pac-Man! As you can see, this is an over-the-head view game where you control a little green cute little dinosaur by the name of Tamagon, and you collect pellets. But in order to collect these pellets, you gotta use a cross to protect yourself from these little demons that are one-eyed monsters. And I'm not talking about penises, I'm talking about legit one-eyed monsters. You clear the level, and while it seems simple enough, the devil at the top of the screen orders his minions to scroll the screen left, right, up, or down in spite of your heroic actions. And this can lead to utter chaos because you have to kind of scan your way around the maze while collecting the pellets in order to not get squished. And believe me, when you get squished, it's not fun, bucko. Now, once in a while, you are able to pick up extra items for points such as Bibles and ice cream cones and sometimes the enemies even drop stuff. That's not much to the game though. The game is pretty simple and straightforward. Each level is split into two parts. The first part is mostly collecting the power pellets. So the basic premise of this game is you walk around collecting the dots but as you can see the main difference is that there's a lot of crosses. For some reason, this was controversial for Nintendo in the 80s. I mean, God forbid there's crosses in a game. Wasn't there crosses in like Castlevania and Zelda even had a cross on the shield? I mean, there's so many more violent games that came out for the NES. Narc, that's a pretty violent game. You could shoot dogs and blow people's heads off in that game. Um, there was fighting games. This is ridiculous. How is this game banned? Just because crosses? There's nothing else in this game. Oh, that's why. Because there's a freaking Bible in it. Oh, God forbid there's a Bible in a game. The second part is getting all four Bibles, yes, Bibles, into the middle pedestal with the skull on it. When you do that, the devil retreats and then it begins a bonus round where you collect even more Bibles. That's a lot of Bibles. How do we even know if this little monster dude can even read her? But that's besides the point. This game is unique. It's a simple idea with strange symbolic religious references. But it works. This is a little bit ridiculous. You know, I'm glad Nintendo standards are a little bit higher now. Well, not higher, lower. Wait. Yeah, they're lower now because, you know, they don't care about this shit anymore. I mean, was it really necessary for this game to not come out in North America? I mean, this is a game that's not bad. It probably would have sold well in the United States. I mean, it's actually pretty addictive. I guess the big blue devil on the top of the screen didn't help to anything with Nintendo's strict policies. He's blue though. It's not like he's bright red and he's called the devil, but I think I think that's the literal translation that the localization had. That's a lot of shuns at the end of my words. I think the localization that Nintendo would have had to do literally translated to the devil as the character's name, but even then there's been worse characters. I mean, Castlevania had death in it for cripe's sake. Devil World offers a cute little character in a strange world that is simple, creative, and straight to the point, and engages in challenging gameplay that increases with every level. It's something that in 1984 not many games had, and while it does have a Pac-Man clone feel to it, it's far from it, actually. 
it actually couldn't be any more different. So the game progresses a little bit harder, as I mentioned, when you go through the rounds. And it just gets a little bit more difficult to time how fast the maze is going. So you get squished. Like my face and your mom's tits. But yeah, as you can see, interesting gameplay. Screen moves. Different enemies come in and your character has to use a variety of tactics to get the pellets and destroy them. And then you move on to the Bible stage where you move the Bibles into the podium to get the devil out of there. I think what gives this game its appeal and charm is the fact that it is pretty basic and bare bones as I mentioned. I think this was the beginning of Miyamoto's formula that is very successful of having games that are easy just to pick up and play. It focuses on the gameplay rather than graphics and advanced mechanics. It's simple, it's short, it's arcade style, it has a very memorable character. The music may not be that great during the gameplay, but the title screen music is catchy. It has all the elements of a classic Nintendo game. And that is what makes it perfect. It's not bad gameplay. It's a little twist of what the Pac-Man formula is. And I think it's a highly underrated Nintendo title overall. I'm not saying NES, but overall as a company, I think Miyamoto created something that had potential. It just couldn't reach itself. Now, I don't know how this game did in Europe or Japan, but I think it could have personally did well in North America. And my opinion, there's no reason why this game hasn't been released for the virtual console. I mean, the Wii's almost done. It's going to be Wii U season soon. But this is a game that I think should make its rounds into North America somehow, even if it's a downloadable title, or maybe even a spin-off sequel or something. So until that day comes, unfortunately, we can only hope. Why Nintendo did this other than the religious symbols and the devil? I don't know. I mean, I think this game is recommendable. If you have a Famicom, there's no fucking reason why you shouldn't have this game. If you're over across the pond, like my friend Chipsters, for example, if you don't have this, buddy, you need to get it. This is a great NES game, Famicom game, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's a great title, highly recommended. If not, just emulate it, play it. It's arcade-style action. It's not bad. It's a hidden gem that Nintendo should take advantage of, especially in today's society. I mean, this is nothing that we haven't seen with Grand Theft Auto and GoldenEye and Halo and Zelda nowadays and Mortal Kombat and, you know, almost every game. I bet you every game behind me right here has more violence than this one. Well, guys, Domo Arigato, as they would say in Japan, this has been another episode of the 8-Bit Eric Show. I'd like to thank you for checking it out, and I will be seeing you soon. Peace. And this time I'm wearing pants, so look. Don't get your hopes up, ladies. See ya.